Hey everybody and welcome to Cypress Steel Forge. We got some fun for you today. Alright, so as I was saying before, I love knives. Been collecting them forever. Love them. I make them now. It, it's a passion for me. When I was young, loving knives meant going to flea markets and buying just the worst crap you can imagine. Because it looked cool and it was fun. So now I'm older, I make my own knives. Here's what I was thinking. I'm going to take those flea market knives and try to make them cool but actually functional. And so to start us off today, I've got a great representation of what you find at every flea market. And that is those two things that you find in every flea market knife shop, ninjas and survival. And have I got something for you folks, the ninja survival knife. That's right. Look at this weird thing here. I'm not sure if you're supposed to be surviving a ninja or if a ninja is supposed to be surviving something, but I don't think this is really going to be helpful. We got uh, some serrations here because every survival knife needs that. Uh, the, the blade's off center from the handle because we've got a little throwing spike that is really, really stuck in there. It's supposed to unscrew so you can throw it at things. We've got uh, a curve in what should be a straight blade. We've got this oversized handle. I don't know if y'all can see that real well, but my hand barely goes around it, which is also made of inferior rubber and super sticky. And then we've got these nice unscrewable spikes on the end that I guess you're supposed to smack somebody with. And it comes with extra fun. Little spikes that are supposed to go into the front of this thing here so that you can punch somebody with that crazy mess. All right, so what I'm going to do with this is we're going to do a bit of a redesign and make this into a proper functional knife, but we'll leave some of the fun aspects. Not, not this handguard. This, this handguard's not fun. You see these pokey bits here? When I grab it, they're poking me. So what I'm going to do here, and y'all have to forgive my lack of ability to draw, is we're going to straighten out this, this knife. So this blade is in line with the, with the tang now. We're going to get rid of that, uh, that crazy little spike. We don't need to be throwing anything. Give it a straight kick, uh, stick tang here. Make it nice and strong. And we're going to put a little nub on the end of it that will be threaded. So that it can actually have a, a spike that, that's functional. Going to make us a, a hand guard. Something that looks a little bit like a, a throwing star, but isn't going to poke us and then for the handle we've got some leather sitting in some uh, black dye right now it's gonna look awesome we're gonna do a stacked leather handle it's gonna be amazing all right so what I'm gonna do now is prepare the leather for the handle since we're doing a ninja survival knife we've got to have it black because you know how else you gonna sneak up on a ninja so I'm just taking some scrap leather I've got laying around and I'm just going to cut it down into squares that are going to stack onto the handle. And I'll we'll drill the holes and put them onto the handle. But first, I'm going to put them in a tub and I'll mass dye them all black at one time. The leather cut and looks like we got roughly enough really want a, at least a few too many then we'll move on to dyeing them in mass and i'm just using some cloth dye it won't take it all the way to black but it will darken it enough to to really be cool all right so what i've done is uh, just got enough water in there to make sure all the pieces are, are soaking and then i'm just going to open up the fabric dye here and uh Sure, there are good directions, but we're just kind of going to wing it here. I'm going to put in about three good capfuls because we want to really, really, really. Now yeah, let's go for it. Get it as dark as we possibly can, and we're just going to stir that up a bit, and we'll uh, let that sit for a couple of days, and uh, hopefully we'll get some nice, really dark leather to go for our ninja knife. Alright, so now it's uh, it's been a couple days, week and a half, whatever. It's been quite the week and a half. 
But uh, let's get this uh, leather out of this uh, dye. You can see uh, after a week and a half it's actually really really nice and dark. So all we're going to do is just take it out of this here uh, water with the dye and we're just going to put it on this old towel that nobody cares about because it's probably going to dye this towel. And we're, we're going to need these to dry out entirely so that uh, we can stack them on the handle. 10 inches of steel. That'll give us a good 8 inch blade. And this part here where the hole is ain't going to matter because this is all going to get drawn out into the stick tank. Folks, welcome back to the forge. Uh, it's been a little bit. Uh, I know things look a little different behind me. That's because about four weeks, one 13 year old birthday, one wedding, and a holiday has passed since the last time I was standing here on this project. Life gets a little crazy. But what we've done is cut out a piece of metal off, off the uh, lawnmower blade. That way we can reuse the metal. Now we're going to heat this up. And beat it into our survival line. All right, so our piece is getting hot now, and uh, first thing we're going to do is straighten it out. Start stretching out that blade a little bit and work the tip. This is my go-to hammer for that sort of thing. Two-pound cross pin. Really can't beat it for moving metal. So now we got the blade mostly straightened out, we're going to start working on the tip. Turns out the piece is just... And with a Tanto style tip like that, we're just going to kind of get the shape in there, and we'll go in with a grinder and actually cut it out to get those nice sharp angles. Alright, as you can see, I went ahead and uh, cut the uh, tip in, like I was saying. And we've actually cut the tang down just a bit there, because we had a bit too much metal. And now we're going to draw that out into our stick tang. Alright, so now we're working on getting the tang drawn out. Kind of put it on the edge of the anvil there. starting to come out nicely. I can see this uh, stick tank is pretty close to done. So we're just going to clean it up a little bit. And it's going to be just about ready for the next process here. Which is annealing. And what I'm going to do is I'll get the blade all the way up to temperature inside the forge and I'll seal it off inside there and let it cool overnight. Get the metal nice and soft. Alright, so now we're just going to touch up the tang, make sure it's good and straight. And then we want to kind of measure it against your hand. Whatever you do, don't touch it at this point. But I want to make sure it's actually longer than my hand is wide. That way I got room for a hand guard, the butt cap, and the spike. Do you recall we're going to thread this thing after it's cooled? And the spike will thread right onto the back of it. So that's going to be it for today. We're going to anneal it so that it's not get all the stress out of it from being forged. And it'll be ready to go to the grinder tomorrow. Always remember when grinding, safety first. Something to breathe through and check them eyeballs. So we got it mostly cleaned up. I'm going to just 
through a bit more here, but I ain't going to worry too much on the scale because we are going to be blackening this blade out. I ain't overly worried about it looking a little roughish. Um, got the bevels lined in. I don't know if you can see that there. So now what I'm going to do is sort out how I'm going to do those serrations. And that, uh, that'll take me a minute or two. Okay, well, uh, as you can see, serrations are not a particularly strong suit of mine, but they are in, and they are kind of functional, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't want to get stabbed with it, but uh, I wouldn't want to get stabbed with this part neither. All right, one quick trip outside to the angle grinder. We've shortened up our tang just a little bit, got it nice and rounded, ready for tap. Got some more work to do on the blade, but we'll get there. <clears throat> Got a handguard piece cut, butt cap piece cut, and a piece of railroad spike cut off for our, our uh, butt spike. All right, so I got the uh, handguard drilled here. Now we're just taking a file, cleaning up the holes and whatnot, get it slotted up for the uh, knife to fit through. All right, it's been 17 forever, but we finally got it slotted up. See, knife fits neatly in there, and that's going to be our hand guard. So next thing we're going to do is uh, shape this into something really cool. this here nice and flat now so it can be drilled and tapped and ready to set on all right so we've went ahead and took this over to the drill press drilled a hole in it made sure this here lines up pretty well you see uh well maybe you can't see it's a little bit bigger than the hole but that's all right because what we're going to do is thread this and this so they'll fit together nicely now once we got this on here we can start shaping our spike all right, so I kind of got caught up in stuff and forgot to take the camera with me. But uh, as you can see, I've threaded the end of the thing. And I've threaded the uh, butt cap here. So it fits on there nicely. Screws right into place. And that'll hold everything together while the epoxy dries. But for now, we're going to use it sitting on top of there to shape that spike. All right, so may have gotten a little out of hand. I uh, Instead of just a standard spike, I put a uh, double flared step down. But hey, everybody knows the secret to surviving ninjas is cool. So now we got it mostly cleaned up here. Uh, got us a little bend in it, but that's fixable. Uh, time to start uh, grinding in the bevels. All right, so a lot of stuff's happened off camera. I apologize for that, but hey, that's the way life goes. But we have the handguard and butt cap all done up. You see the butt cap? It's nice and drilled out, ready to go. And we got our nice pokey handguard. That's right. You're still going to be able to punch ninjas or what have you. This will sit right on top of here. And but spike will thread right on top of here. And voila. You have yourself one more ninja bad knife. 
All right, so the next step, we've already got this all fitted up. So it's going to be time for straighten this thing out. You know, make sure it's all nice and straight, then heat treat. Then it's going to be time for the handle. The handle, we have all that leather that we dyed before. And you see, it, it kind of came out more of a gray than a, than a true black. But that's all right. It will look good. So next thing, we're going to heat treat this thing. We'll take the uh, all the extra bits, the hand guard, the butt cap, and the spike. We'll put them in the forge, heat them up, dip them in the oil. That'll give them a nice gray forge patina just to kind of black them out a little bit. Then we'll dunk them in the uh, ferric chloride, make everything nice and dark, put the leather handle on there. She'll be ready to go. Guys, I got to tell you the truth. I'm kind of looking forward to having this thing. <laughs> it's turning out a whole lot cooler than I thought it was going to. All right. We got us a handle. Nice and smooth. Took it all the way up to a thousand grit. Put some nice linseed oil on there. You see, some of the, the natural leather showed through the black anyways. We could dye that and fix it, but honestly, I kind of like it the way it is, so I'm going to leave it alone. Let's sharpen this bad boy up and have us some fun. Well, can't survive ninjas if you can't survive wood, right? So let's try this thing out. That is beautiful. Yeah. And that's one awesome ninja survival knife. Nice and sharp. Got a solid handle on there. Nice and comfortable. The handguard doesn't poke me, but it still could poke a ninja, I guess. A little longer than the original because I got to having a bit too much fun. We got our serrations, we got a really nice butt spike there. Let's go have some fun with it. Oh, so close! Damn near all the way through. We're gonna try one more time. Try up a little bit here. There you go. Clean through. And that. Is a cut hose. <laughs> All right, so just as a reminder, this was the original flea market piece with the two spikes, oversized, still sticky. In spite of the fact it's chilly out here, handle, the pokey hand guard, the offset blade, and yeah, not sharp at all. Uh, you notice I'm barely banging it because I don't want it to fall apart. And here is the sapper steel. Reproduction. Hand forged blade, a little bit longer, sure. But you know, we were having some fun. Got a nice pokey hand guard that only hits the enemy. Extra long butt cap, cause you want to crack that head. And a beautiful leather handle. <laughs>